Hey everyone, welcome to a no part series featuring tips and tricks for Genshin Impact. Uh, it's with much hope that after you finish sitting through this video, you'll have learned how not to be a new scrub and you can play Genshin Impact like a pro. Uh, the topic and focus of today's discussion is going to be about min-maxing tips in Genshin Impact. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it. Tip number one, always, always have your resin on cooldown. Original resin passively regenerates daily at a rate of 1 every 8 minutes. This means that in a given 24 hour period, you will replenish 180 resin. Uh, however, the maximum cap that you can have at any given time in the game is only 120. So technically what this means is that at the very minimum, you have to log into the game at least twice a day to burn your resin and keep your counter ticking. Resin is the only thing gating you from getting additional adventure experience outside of one-time domains, commissions, and quests once you pretty much complete all of the story and you've pretty much 100% explored the map and collected all the chests. So it's very important to keep your resin on cooldown and make sure that you don't ever let it max out. Tip number two, mark your Oculus findings on the map. It can be any map, either in-game or on MS Paint. Anything that will really help you keep track of where you've collected Animoculuses or Geoculuses. This is especially important when you near the end of your statue upgrades for each region. You don't want to be that guy at the very end of your game, spending hours running around the map just looking for the last Oculus that you failed to collect. Save yourself the headache and the hours of searching and mark them as you play the game. It will save you a bunch of time near the end. Links to the interactive maps can be found in the description box and they should have where all the Animoculus and Geoculus locations are. Tip number three, get into the habit of min-maxing your character experience materials. Much like Honkai Impact, Genshin Impact will allow you to overfill your character when they hit level cap for their current ascension level. You don't want to commit an entire hero's wit and risking wasting valuable character experience just to level them up. Character experience materials become very, very valuable as your character roster grows and as you grow and you get farther into the game and your AR level hits around 30 to 40 plus. The more characters you have, the more demanding it will be on your character experience materials to keep everyone leveled up. The proper way to level a character is to use the highest experience material available to level up the character the highest level for that character extension rank. However, right before you hit the max level, remove one or two materials so you don't gain your final level. Then switch to the smallest character experience material you have, which is Wanderer's Advice in this case, and add experience until you're near the last few hundred experience points before leveling up. From here, return to questing and whatever else you are doing that will require fighting enemies to gain your final level. This way you don't waste an entire hero's wit or character experience and you let overflow happen as you're fighting enemies. This same logic can be applied to as you level your artifacts as well. Tip number four, make runs for crystal chunks and white iron chunks every other day, or every day if you have a co-op friend who hasn't collected theirs yet. Crystal chunks and white iron are all on a roughly 48 hour respawn timer. These materials are important because you can use them to satisfy a daily battle pass requirement and they are used for crafting the best weapon experience material. This is important because near the end game, leveling up your weapons become expensive and you may not have enough weapon fodder to get your weapons up to the max level. This is especially important if you end up rolling a shiny new 5 star on a limited banner. Tip number 5. Potion crafting and cooking and forging. Whenever you cook, whenever you craft, whenever you forge, always make sure that you check to see which characters give you bonuses when you do any of the actions. It's important to do this so you can make use of some of the special attributes that the characters have. For example, cooking a steak with amber will give you a special type of steak, or cooking the chicken skewer with Kea will give you a special type of chicken skewer. The same applies for crafting with Lisa, she gives uh, additional other items, and other people have different effects either. So as your character roster grows, make sure you check to see which characters give which beneficial gain and always make sure that you do the right one. A really good tip is that Noelle has the ability to make a very special type of pancake that helps your characters revive and she her special food dish that she cooks for those pancakes is much better than the base pancake one to revive your characters. 
All right, everyone, that's it for today's quick tips and tricks. Today is just a few min-maxing tips that I've learned along the way from playing in CBT3, CBT2, and the PS4 beta. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Uh, if you like what you saw, please smash that like and subscribe button. I do stream regularly on Twitch, so you can find me on my Twitch channel as well. Thanks, and have a good one.